backflying in physics. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Up in the Air with me, Skydiver Tanner. This is episode number 11. Today we're going to be discussing backflight and physics when it comes to body flight. Now, if you haven't seen episode number 6 of Up in the Air with me, Skydiver Tanner, go back and watch that one. It explains um, belly to earth orientation and physics because belly flight is the first way you learn how to fly when it comes to skydiving and tunnel flight. So today we'll be discussing the backflying portion of it. Now, if you don't remember, I have my friend Woody, and I have Woody currently in the belly-to-earth orientation, which is the stable way for flying. We want to start talking about backflying. Now, obviously, you don't want to backfly like this. This is not a very stable position. This is going to cause a lot of issues. And so what we do with backflying is we're going to change the body a little bit. We're going to flatten out the back, we're going to bring in the knees up, and we're going to point the feet up in the air like this. So now, it's a little bit different. The upper body is still exactly the same. We still have that nice 90 degrees with our arms, and with our legs we're going to have a nice 90 degrees going on. We can also even, if you want, bring the hands and the elbows in. Woody is not very flexible, but you could kind of bring them in a little bit so it's kind of like a diamond shape over your head. But the reason why now we want to fly like this versus how we do on our belly is because as the air comes up, it's going to hit our legs, it's going to hit our back, and it's going to hit our arms. And this is what's going to create the surface area for us to start flying. Now back flying can be uh, really easy and it can be very difficult at the same point. It's one of those where you have to remember to really kind of maintain these uh, this perfect body position with these angles because little tiny bits can make a big difference. The reason why we want to learn how to start back flying uh, aside from our belly is because now we can start to use much faster wind speeds. You can fly on your back at a fairly low wind speed, the same as what you fly on your belly, um, but also at a very fast wind speed, so if you want to start learning how to do a heads up or a sit fly or a heads down fly, um, if you have to bail from those positions, you go to your back because the back is the safest place you can be at those high wind speeds. If you were to flip over your belly, especially in the wind tunnel, you're going to go flying up really quickly. Luckily, the power toward the top of the tunnel weakens out a little bit, so you're not going to go slamming up into the ceiling like most people think. But again, with the physics of this, like I said, we, it's all about surface area. So what we're going to do while we start flying is if we want to start to turn when we're flying, you can do something very, very basic as even twist the feet a little bit. Your feet are going to act like rudders. So as the air comes up, it gets redirected. It's coming up, redirect that way, which is going to cause your body to start to turn that way. Same thing if you put your feet the other direction, air is going to come up, it's going to redirect, causing you to turn that way. And you can also do the same with your arms a little bit, you know, if you want to kind of lose surface area, you're going to create more here and kind of cause a roll, or you can bring them in. Uh, that'll all help you to turn. You can even do the legs. The legs will cause a nice, really hard turn to go one direction or not. But for the beginning, we just use the feet as rudders to kind of start turning our body. To go forward, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bring our legs down and bend them in a bit. Woody, you're not very flexible here. Kind of bring them down as like a 45 degree angle, your shins. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend the arms above our head a little bit. So now what happens, if you could see what's going on, is you're creating more surface area above the head and with the legs kind of pitched down, which like I said, Woody, 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 you're just not very flexible. Legs are going to go down, it's going to cause another angle, air is going to come up, redirect that way, which is going to cause him to start moving toward the feet. So putting the arms right up above the head, having those legs bent, creating surface area up here with the arms being closer 
and the legs being bent gives you that drive forward towards your feet. Now if you want to start to go towards your head, you're going to kind of do the opposite. You're going to extend the legs out because now we're creating more surface area here because your thighs are being exposed a little bit more to the wind so it's creating a little bit more lift and you're going to kind of bring your arms down and in a little bit more closer instead of above your head again we're creating an angle air is going to come up here and it's going to redirect that direction so what's going to happen as you start to straighten your legs out you're going to start flying toward your head there's a bunch of other different ways on how you can do all sorts of different turns and movements inside the wind uh, but these are kind of the basics now if you want to go up you want to create more surface area. So if your legs are at this 90 degree angle and your arms are at those nice 90 degree angles, what do you think you would do? You want to create surface area with him, but you don't want to uh, have a drive going toward your head or toward your feet. So you are going to start to straighten the legs out a little bit, which you think would start driving you to your head, but you're going to counteract it by extending your arms above your head a little bit. So again, you're bringing those arms closer. It's going to create a little bit more surface area above your head. Your legs are extending out, creating more surface area with the thighs, and you're going to start to go up. Now, if you want to come down, you just start to tuck everything in nice and slow. You maybe start bringing your arms really close to your body, and that way you start to lose surface area and you start to come down. You could even put your legs up a little bit like that and bring your arms up. And so now you can kind of see it's counteracting, right? You got wind coming here going that way while you got wind coming here going that way. And it's going to help start to bring you down. Now everything happens really quickly inside the wind tunnel or inside the sky with all these little movements. If you don't do things very correctly, it could cause a lot of issues. Back flying can be one of the most dangerous ways of learning how to fly because a lot of issues start to come into play. If you create too much of a drive toward your head, you could smack into the glass, or if you don't see, if you're skydiving, if you don't see someone's there, you could crash into someone. You're not seeing down, so if there's someone below you and you try to get smaller surface area to drop down to them, you could be dropping down on top of someone. And then same with the thing with the feet. If you tuck your legs in too tight and you put your arms way above your head, you could start driving to your feet pretty quickly. Now I'm going to show a video right here of me practicing uh, some different types of transitions of going from your belly to your back and uh, also back to belly because those are how do you get from those two orientations and one of them is over the head which is by far the most dangerous ways of doing a transition um, from belly to back and back to belly. So take a look at this video, have a little bit of a laugh of it, and I'll be right back. So there you go, there's the video. Kind of funny, but at the same time, this is a good point to say this is how injuries can really start to happen. You know, uh, in the moment, I will say I was up against the glass and I remember thinking, I'm against the glass, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get away from the glass? Do I push myself off? How do I go back to belly? How do I go back to my back? And next thing you know, I just said, you know, I'm back flying again. Now it all happened in a split second as you see in the video, but in my head it felt like I was up there for like 5-10 seconds. And um, so it can, it can become very dangerous if you don't know how to react with things that are going on. Luckily I was able to react quickly enough to understand what I needed to do to prevent myself from having a huge injury, but a lot of students don't know that type of stuff. So with going back to the belly, or belly to back even, the first thing we always teach is how to do an over the feet transition. 
And the reason why we do this is because we want to keep the head nice and safe and we don't want it to go into the glass and we don't want it to go into the ground or into the net when we're tunnel flying. So with back to belly, we want to extend the arms up above the head a little bit and create that surface area because like I said, that's kind of a forward drive, correct? But what we're going to do is we're going to maybe like arch our backs a little bit because what we want to do is we want our upper body to start to pivot on that point to go over to our belly. Now, as we're right here, what we basically do, just let the legs come back, kick up, and now you're in belly flight. And it's gonna be the same thing when you wanna go from belly to back. We're gonna cut into start to stretch our arms above our head, and we're gonna to start to create that lift in front of us. As we start to transition over, we bring our legs in, almost as if we're sitting in a chair, and once we get to our back, we start to bring our arms down. So that's kind of how we do our over-the-feet transitions. It's kind of hard to do with Woody here. I'll, again, play some video of me flying inside the wind tunnel. You have to excuse the clip I have. Um, it was me during Halloween wearing a more suit. I wanted to be the nameless instructor, no face, no nothing. So it looks a little bit goofy, but you can kind of see how that transition happens. The other way we could go from our back to belly or belly to back is we can do a barrel roll. And what we basically would do is in skydiving, if you are on your belly, they kind of tell you to just kind of uh, reach across with an arm. If you tuck an arm down in the way, you're creating less surface area over here. So your body starts to kind of naturally roll. And as you get to your back, your legs go into that back flying position. And there you're back flying. The other thing you could do is you could kind of crisscross the legs to kind of create a different change in the wind and angles again. And you can also stretch your arms above your head like you're trying to grab a ball and simply rotate yourself and get back to your belly. It's really hard to do with Woody, better to do if you guys see it uh, on video. And if you're out in person, then we teach you, uh, we do like a dirt diving. If you haven't seen episode number nine, I believe it is on safety stuff, so you'll find out what dirt diving is there. Um, but we dirt dive it usually on the ground so you can kind of get a feel for it while you're in the wind. But again, that's a very good, safe way to learn how to start getting into high speed flight and how the physics behind it all works. The biggest thing to just remember is angles. Everything has to deal with angles. If you uh, simply think about where the wind is coming from and how physics works, like I said, you're sticking that leg out, you got wind coming here, it's gonna direct that way, it's gonna cause you to drive toward uh, whatever direction. So everything is about angles and thinking about where your body needs to be. And if you are good at thinking about that, you're gonna be really well at back flying or body flight inside the wind tunnel as it is. Now, other orientations, it is a little bit difficult. Yes, it's still all about angles and you think about that, but you're also, um, I don't wanna say fighting, 130 plus mile per hour winds, but you know, it's, it is a unique feeling and, and tiny, tiny little movements make a huge deal when those winds are extremely fast like that. Like I said, for turning just your feet, just your feet alone can cause that turn while you're on your back. Now, one of the other things we might do with really fast wind speeds when we're back flying, we might stick a leg straight up in the air and have the other one kind of in a little bit. This creates a little bit less surface area for the wind to be taking us up. Um, like I said, fast wind speed. So if you've got a lot going on, you want the air to kind of slip by, you still got surface area here to help lift you up. You might bring your arms in a little bit closer to your body so that way you're not creating so much surface area out in the sides. Um, and you could still steer with your foot. You can even steer with this upper leg that's sticking up. Uh, but it's a real safe way because if you're at a very fast wind speed, 130 plus miles per hour. Uh, I don't know what that is in kilometers per hour. You know, Americans, we, we, we don't learn other things. Um, but if you're fast wind speed and you have both of them down, it's gonna be really hard for you to come down. You could stick both legs up in the air, you know, and, and basically do this, this kind of tuck type thing. Uh, but you're not gonna have as much control. So usually we'll stick one leg straight up, have the other leg kind of bent down and use that for steering and for lift. 
Anyways, hope this kind of helped you guys learn some different things on different ways of body flight, aside from just the belly flying that I showed before. Shows how the physics and everything plays out inside the wind tunnel or even in the sky with skydiving. It's a lot to think about, but like I said, if you get the concept of it, if you start to understand it, you pick it up fairly quickly. There's a lot of other movements that comes with back flying that I didn't get into. It's a little bit more advanced than I think we should probably bring up here. Um, but I'm going to play some videos again uh, for you guys to watch a little bit with different uh, orientations of the way you can body fly, whether skydiving or inside the wind tunnel. Thank you guys for stopping by today. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. I also have links in the description if you would like to become a Patreon. I will be posting videos strictly for my Patreons. I do have one in there right now. Thank you to Microraptor for being a Patreon. I also have a link to my PayPal or Venmo if you'd like to donate to this channel uh, to kind of help get new equipment or to advance things a little bit. Um, or if you just enjoy the stuff that I put out, be sure to come by on Wednesdays for Hump Day Hangouts with Chase and I and have some good time there. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys later. Love and light. Stay safe. Wear your mask.